Hey everyone, today I want to talk to you about uh, testing as it results or as it relates to uh, mild traumatic brain injuries. Mild traumatic brain injuries are always the most difficult to deal with and in fact it's been known to be what we call a silent epidemic affecting as many as 10 million Americans each year. The problem is that the medical personnel, particularly with uh, first responders, and emergency rooms are not really well equipped to properly screen these and the tests that have traditionally been run to determine whether a person has a mild traumatic brain injury or not are essentially pr pretty useless. So what I'm going to do today is kind of uh, outline for you from a temporal or chronological standpoint the best way to go about protecting your loved one if they have been in a traumatic accident and need your assistance. If it is immediately after the accident and let's say you're at the emergency room, one of the most common tests that are performed are what's called the Glasgow Coma Scale or the GCS for short and it's based on a 15 point scale. The problem is, is that it really doesn't properly screen for a brain injury and in fact most emergency personnel and first responders don't even perform the test right. I've taken many uh, depositions in litigation and found that they really don't even know what they're doing and many times we'll just simply put 15 out of 15 as some sort of a uh, default response to even doing the test. So one of the more accurate tests and if you're in the emergency room setting is to ask the doctor to perform what's called the GOAT, G-O-A-T, and it stands for the Galveston Orientation and Amnesia Test. And what it does is test more appropriately for what we call an alteration in consciousness. Most people would associate that with um, a loss of consciousness, but that is not the case. If a person is disoriented, dizzy, um, or cannot recall immediate events, then that is an alteration of consciousness that would establish a mild traumatic brain injury. So performing the GOAT in the emergency room setting is very, very useful. Then afterwards, most doctors are going to rely on a few different tests. The first and the most popular, and I have no idea why this is the case, would be a CT or what we would call a CAT scan. CAT scan has absolutely no value in determining whether or not a person has suffered a mild and many times even a moderate traumatic brain injury. And the reason why is because a CAT scan or a CT scan, all it does is detect brain bleed. So unless you have some sort of hemorrhage, which most mild traumatic brain injuries are not accompanied by, it's really going to do you no good. A lot of other times, doctors will recommend a conventional or a, what we would call a normal MRI of the brain and while an MRI is a very, very useful test in, a test in showing the um, occurrences to the soft tissues of the body, it's really only going to show very frank or obvious white matter changes and it's not going to get into the, um, the nuances or the, the microscopic details of uh, axonal or what we would call DAI, diffuse axonal injury, that is more commonly associated with a mild traumatic brain injury. So those are the, the two of the tests that really are no good. Now a third one which is what's called an EEG and that tests the electricity or the electrical current of the brain which can be interrupted uh, even in a sometimes a mild traumatic brain injury. It's really only useful for a very short period of time because after that the electrical waves will, st uh, will stabilize and it's good for maybe a handful of hours, maybe even up to a day, but there's really been no concrete evidence medically um, in the medical uh, community that shows that an EEG is a good indicator of spotting a mild traumatic brain injury just because of its limited time of effectiveness. So essentially um, what I would do if a loved one of mine in the emergency room setting, I would definitely ask for the GOAT test and see what they say. After that, a uh, diffusion tensor imaging exam is very useful because it is kind of what I call the MRI on steroids. It is outfitted with special processing software which actually tracks and measures quantitatively the water flow in the brain, a much better indicator of whether a person is uh, suffering from a mild traumatic brain injury. So if you approach this from the mindset that the medical community is actually behind the times in terms of the diagnostic testing available, what they're really looking for and what they really only consider many times 
to be a person with a brain injury is if the person is is non-responsive or uh, they can't even say their name. But there's there's a big spectrum of brain injuries that don't qualify for that scenario, such as a mild traumatic brain injury, which also happens to me the most common. So I sure hope these tips hope you help your loved ones, keep them safe, and properly diagnose the issues that they're having from the very beginning so that their medical charts are clear and replete with proper screenings, proper diagnoses, and therefore proper treatment. Thanks a lot. We'll talk again soon.